Good morning, and I would like to welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today uh, to celebrate this liturgy um, for Jose. I know that uh, uh, the parent, I was talking with the parents right before, and it's just amazing how many people are here this morning, and it really shows how much Jose was loved. Um, so I invite us during this time to pray for him, to pray for ourselves, um, and to enter and put, our, put ourselves in the place, reminding ourselves that the Lord is here with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> In the waters of baptism, Jose died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Jose, who has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll have a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
again, it's an honor to get to celebrate this today for Jose, you know, as we come together praying for him. <clears throat> and I love this, this gospel, particularly for moments like this, um, moments where we're grieving, where we're mourning. We're mourning the loss of Jose to this world. We're mourning the loss of not seeing him physically again, not being able to talk to him. However, we don't mourn without, without hope. We grieve with a Christian hope. I love St. Paul talks about how we, we don't grieve like the rest who have no faith. We grieve always with the horizon of eternal life, knowing that the promise of Jesus right here is real. That he, Jesus says that he's talking to the apostles, saying he's going to prepare a place for us. You know, in that place, we know the way. And it's by, by that relationship with Jesus uh, is, is the way. Like, as Jesus says, the way, the truth, and the life. You know, the, so we still mourn today. We mourn the loss of Jose to this world. But we don't mourn without hope. I always think about, uh, when I was praying for Jose this morning, praying about coming here, I was reminded just in, in prayer about one of the stories of our great saints in the Catholic Church, St. Thomas Aquinas, who was a, um, an intellectual and one of the greatest theologians we've ever had, did a lot of writing, lived 700, 800 years ago. Well, towards the end of his life, he was in the middle of his greatest work, and he only had a little bit more to finish writing. But he had a vision, and he had this vision of the Lord, and... Um, and from that point on, he stopped writing. He would just go sit out in, in the field, staring out into the horizon in prayer. And the other monks that lived with him would come to him, Thomas, we got to finish this work. You know, what are you doing? Why aren't you, why aren't you working here? And Thomas said to him, after everything that I've seen, all that I've written is but straw. It's but nothing. Thomas had this vision of God, the glory of God knowing that that was real, that that's the, the journey that Thomas was on, and that everything that he had written, even though for us, we still use his works today, 700, 800 years later, you know, the proofs for the existence of God, all these other things that he's written, which are unbelievable theological, but also logical works. They, they make so much sense. That all he had written was, was but nothing compared to what he had seen, the glory that he had seen in God, in this vision that he had. We don't know the details of the vision or what it was, um, but he probably couldn't describe it or put it into words, but knowing that that is the reality we all live in, that our day-to-day -day experience isn't the end, that all of us are, are in this world on a pilgrimage, we're on a journey towards eternal life, and keeping in mind the idea and the, the reality that eternal life is right there beyond us is so important. You know, I'm sure if Jose was here today, he would say, don't waste a minute, you know? Don't waste a minute, knowing that we all have this, this horizon of eternal life in the backdrop of our lives as we, as we go through our daily experience of going to work, school, whatever it may be, going to Publix, you know, knowing that we're all on this journey, and this is the journey that Jose has now completed. This is the journey that Jesus is talking about, knowing that we have this, this journey of, towards eternal life, that Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. Jesus went to prepare a place for Jose. That's the promise of the gospel today. This place has been prepared for Jose. And Jose, knowing that Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life, is the fulfillment of that journey. So the invitation for all of us going forward is to enter into that, to be reminded of Jose. You know, we have these beautiful cards that were made. And I invite you to take one with you if you didn't get one uh, on the way in. To take one with you today, place it in a pl put it in a place where you'll see it, and be reminded of Jose, but also be reminded of the journey that all of us are on towards eternal life, towards the heavenly homeland. This time I invite us all to stand for the prayers of the faithful. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus 
we join our prayers to his. In baptism, Jose received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother Jose was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your Son, we pray to the Lord. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone, we pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of Jose that seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief, we pray to the Lord. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Jose, strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Now I invite all of us to be seated, and I'll invite some family members to share a few words on Jose. I think I can speak for all of us when I say losing Jose has knocked the wind from our sails and life without him here in it isn't just going to be the same. Even though he was taken from us much too soon to those of us whose lives he touched, he won't ever leave us, not really. While Jose might not have been a man to often use words to express his love, save but for a precious few, he was a man who showed all of us over and over how much he cared because he invested in each of us, whether through acts of service or just spending quality time. He had a special way of helping people to flourish to their highest potential. He really did. I think it's a true testament to his character and the man he was to see how immeasurably loved he is and remembered so well by all of us. I've always said I'm rich in my friendships. That's where the value is for me. And with that, Jose was a true treasure. To say that Jose was a man who meant a great deal to a great many people doesn't quite capture it, does it? He was so much more than that. For each of us, that meaning might be different, but the end result was the same. He invested not only financially, (laughs) but he invested in each of us as well. We're all richer for our friendships and interactions with Jose. And for the rest of our lives, we'll keep him in our hearts. There were a million things I wanted to say to him. I'm sure all of us had so many things that we wanted to say. 
goodbye just wasn't one of them. I will forever be honored to have been welcomed so wholeheartedly into his life and for the many, many things he did to make my life that much better. So Jose, I just want to say thank you, my friend, from the bottom of my heart. I pray for peace and comfort for all of us that he's left behind. And <clears throat> and I can't anymore. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Tony Rawson, and uh, I'm Jose's business partner and close friend. Uh, I've known Jose for about 12 years, and I consider him to be my best friend. He was my first phone call in the morning on work days, and it wasn't uncommon to have many calls throughout the day. Um, here's a fun fact about our friendship. Jose and I only met in person four times. Wow. Yeah. So it kind of tells you how you can build a relationship over the phone and have a business and do all these things. Um, the last time I saw him was last April in person. It was at my house. He came. We had some business meetings we had to attend to. Uh, that was the first and only time he came to visit me in California. Um, he spent time with my family. We had a great day together sightseeing in Malibu. Looking at the sightseeing, we just had a great time. It was a, it was a great day together. Uh, my wife Bridget and my girls all enjoyed seeing Jose on that trip. All of them were somehow so, so close to Jose. You know, I'd be on the phone with him in the car and I'd say, you know, earmuffs, um, you know. <laughs> uh, got the girls in the car and, you know, of course he would be, you know, talking to them about their day or, you know, uh, what was going on in their life because he knew what, everything that was going on. Um, when I would tell them, uh, you know, so my family loved Jose very much. Um, Jose's interest in, pe in people was so inspiring. Uh, he had this ability to make you feel important and that, was that, and that he was always listening. He was so good at that. Uh, I think Jose's greatest strength was his interest in helping others. Whether business, personal, financial, Jose was known to give his opinion to people he cared for most regarding their financial planning and wealth building. If, some, if something needed to be fixed or replaced, Jose was quick to do the research, get on the click-clack machine, and get his hands dirty fixing things. Uh, like most men, we both love nice cars. If you were to look at my text messages from him, we would send photos of nice cars we were seeing through while we were driving through town. Um, when he purchased his Jeeps, his Turig, or would get his vehicles fixed, he would say to me jokingly, have I told you about my new turbo? <laughs> Just something he would say. Um, he had dreams of buying a larger boat and naming it Board Meeting. <laughs> he would always say to me, you could come out to Florida, go out on the boat, and we could tell people we couldn't talk because we were on a board meeting. <laughs> so, anyway. I still hear him blurting that out randomly in our conversations. He would, we would be talking, his board meeting. So, he was funny. Um, Jose loved the ocean and would tell me uh, how much he enjoyed sailing with his father, Carlos. And he also enjoyed his road trips to Palm Beach with his mother, Elizabeth. If Jose and I would be on a phone call, his brother Carlos would call in, he'd always take that call. He never missed it. Uh, when it came to Nancy and her kids and the family, they were his family and he was so involved with their lives, he loved this family and his family very much. His intellect made our conversations interesting and comical. We would discuss many topics, personal, politics, social, and we didn't always agree. However, he always presented a convincing argument and encouraged me to see his perspective. He frequently would say, I'm right on both coasts. <laughs> oh, 
His big personality and affable nature will be missed by all. You left this world much too young and I miss you. There is a big spot missing in my world since you passed and I know we will see each other again in another time and place. Rest in peace, my friend. how you follow something so, so personal. Elizabeth and Carlos brought their family to Jacksonville and moved next door to us. It was quite a ride. <laughs> they were so little. And Jose was how old? Uh, Five, six? six yeah, three, three yeah, yeah. And Carlos, not much not much older. Um, there was lots of fun, lots of torment. Um, Jose wanted to be part of Carlos's and Ken's life, follow him around, whatever. They didn't want that. So on occasion, they threw him out the window. <laughs> and, you know, it became just a, a, a thing of the way they interacted with each other. I mean, it was just fun. They got in trouble. They got in trouble together. Um, they played pool at our house almost every afternoon, and it was quite a while before I realized they were emptying the bar <laughs> of, of the precious um, bourbon that was there. And I had a beautiful um, brass bowl, and one day I looked at it, and I was in and out, and we were in and out and in and out in the great room where they were playing pool, and I looked at it, and I looked at the wall, and I realized it was a different color. And I said, what is on that wall? And I walked over, and I touched it. Mm -hmm, mistake. Tobacco juice. <laughs> they were chewing. And, and of course, when I would walk in, they were like, you know, just staring straight, straight. We knew them during those years as fun. They came in the back door and pretty much oatmeal chocolate chip cookies were sitting there. And in the last years of his life, while we were doing business with him and he was coming over to our house to have meetings and such, he'd get as far as the great room and say, where are the oatmeal cookies? <laughs> he just expected them to be where they were. I said, that's a long time ago, Jose. And he'd say, I know, but you still know how to make them. <laughs> and then he'd head right over to the M&M jar. He was loving. You felt safe around him. You knew that the direction he was giving you was the right direction. You could trust him so completely. And we turned everything that we had over to him, which was a very, not a very big amount, but it was um, a very good decision. He just guided us and we felt safe and we'd go out to his office and we would meet with him and he would introduce us to the different people and who was doing what and why did you have these numbers. It was a very good decision on our part, really, to turn everything over to him. And he was surrounded. They say you can tell who a person is if you look at those around them. And um, those around him had great integrity and great honesty. And you could tell they really formed a bond, a family bond, um, that they relied on each other and trusted each other. He was just a loving, loving, giving, thoughtful, affectionate man. And um, we just 
loved him to pieces. We will forever miss him. I get up in the morning and I look at the front door, which is, you know, he was usually coming in through the garage and, you know, talking as he goes. You could hear his voice before you saw him. And he was coming to meet George for lunch. And um, we'll always have such great, great memories of him. And, of course, he's with Carlos. I mean, the two of them, as much as he didn't want the little one to play with you guys, thank God. Um, you know, um, you two were... Dynamo, dynamo. And the way you raised him, Elizabeth and Carlos, and the integrity and the honesty and the goodness, goodness, um, you know, you made it happen. And boy, did he respect it. He'd say to me, I don't say what I should say very often. And then he would speak about Carlos and what he meant to you, and when you were sick, oh my goodness, you know, that was a big deal to him. And he would talk about you, Elizabeth, and, you know, your strength, and how he was like you, and he liked having that kind of strength, and he knew, you know, he felt he got it from you. So, I, our family will always miss him, we really will, and love him, love him. He's not somebody you forget. Now, if I fall down here, Carlos, you have to help me. <laughs> I had some falls recently. Thank you. Thank you for coming, everyone. It's a difficult time to get together. It's a difficult reason. In times like these, it's really easy to go to the dark side, but don't. My brother would tell us if he was here right now, stay in the light. Keep your heart open. Don't close it. And from this small moment, which is big to me, just remember the small gift we get from this is perspective and understanding that life is precious. So turn to the person next to you who you love. Tell them you love them. It's as simple as that. My brother was achieving his dreams. He was achieving his goals in business, chasing his dreams in life. He had a beautiful family, supportive friends, and camaraderie, and he had a he had a zest for life. And it, it was it was infectious. And even though we lived several thousand miles away. I was just looking forward to having that relationship with him and growing old, you know. My father has a brother as well, and uh, he lives several thousand miles away. And I knew we were always going to be best friends. Always. And sometimes I didn't know who was the older brother or not. They say I am, but I think he might have been. <laughs> I will miss his advice. I will miss his spirit. And I'm just going to miss him. Thank you for coming, everyone. Um. I didn't plan to say anything, but uh, <laughs> I felt the Lord lead me to really step up here and um, speak about my uh, a little, just a little bit about my relationship with Jose and um, my feelings about him. Um, just being here and seeing everyone and just seeing their faces and their hearts for their love for him really measures up. 
to how I feel about him, and a lot of you don't know me, but <laughs> I'll just kind of uh, tell you a little bit about that. I met Jose about um, four years ago, and um, it was so random, and it was godly. Um, I used to go into the Starbucks and get my coffee, and I used to do some work, and all y'all know, like, Jose loved his Starbucks, and um, I, uh, I, I, this is the guy that used to sit here, he's like semi-retired, and I went in there, and we would strike up a conversation, and, and then over the, over the last couple of years, I would see him in there, and, and then one day he says, hey, what do you do again? I said, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm in medical sales, and so you need to meet this guy I know. I was like, who's that? So I, I met him in like 2017. And um, I was employed at the time, and I had aspirations, you know, um, to go on my own and starting my own company. And so I met him in 2017 and introduced him, and and I said, yeah. He said, yeah, I do the same thing. And I said, well, yeah, I thought about going on my own. He said, let's go sit down, Jose says. And I said, okay. He says, well, what are you trying to do? And I let him know. I said, well, let's break out the numbers. And, and I just met him. <laughs> I literally just met him, and he says to me, let's break out the numbers, and so he was so encouraging, and then when I made that transition, probably about three or four months later, he was very instrumental in helping me kind of bridge that, and um, and it was just one of those things where you, when you meet someone, it, 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 there's just instant connection that is not describable, and now that's why I always say it's godly. God put him in my life. And um, over the years, we initially started off, uh, first couple of years, first year, we started off as a lot, a lot of business, but our constant conversations turned into a deep friendship. And he would talk to me about his family, Nancy and the kids, and, um, and one of the things I had real connection with him is that his love for family, for people, and his heart for always being a giver, whether it be financially, whether it be for acts of service, you name it. Um, you know, Jose was a very, very intelligent man. He's probably the smartest guy I've ever met. And, um, and with, with that intelligence, he would talk about his dad. And, and as smart as he is, he says, we would talk about something and we're trying to figure something out. And he'd say, I need to run that by my dad. <laughs> and and <laughs> he's like, I need to read about my dad. And so, and then we'd talk. He said, Yeah, I talked to my dad about it, and he gave me a different perspective I never thought of. And yeah, this is how it is. And he he very much leaned on that. And I had so much respect for him for that. The love for his mother. One 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 instance, he told me another illustration of his love for his parents. You know, my dad isn't really. He doesn't really, uh, you know, he doesn't care about the hospital. I mean, if he's in pain, he kind of deals with it. But when he tells me that he needs to go into the hospital, it's a big deal. And he, he told me one instance that he had uh, you'd called him. It was around midnight, and, and he knew. He swapped in, picked you up. He flew into the hospital, hopped the curve, trying to get it in. It. <laughs> I mean, he was just relentless, like a force of nature, going in there, making sure that he was taken care of. And, you know, what's going on? I mean, he just loved it. And he talked to me about Carlos all the way in Hawaii and his connection with you and some of the things and your experiences there. And, and then Nancy. I mean, the last conversation I had the week before he passed, one of his biggest things was he always had a desire to honor his time with you. And when he spoke about your kids, it wasn't, it was like it was his kids. And he said to me, he's like, I was talking to him, it was like 8.30 at night. And he takes my call and he says, he says, yeah, man, only got a couple minutes, man. Um, Nancy's in the store. When she comes out, I got to go. <laughs> and I said, okay. So, <laughs> so he, um, we're talking, we're chit-chatting, we're, and then we finish our conversation He's like, all right, man, got to go. Nancy's coming. I said, like, all right, man, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know that was the last time I'd talk to him. But I have to say that with my faith in God, and we talked about my faith, 
and he always had it as intelligent as he is and as smart and I read the bio that he was your work of art that can't be a better choice of words because you raised a man like Jose that was so authentic with integrity with love it, it's hard to describe I've never met a man like him before and um, to me this is a great loss but precise you said that this is an eternal life and he we spoke about my faith and he loved the Lord and I know where he's at and we will all see him again I know he's looking down and He's saying, guys, I want this to be a celebration. You know, I want you guys to be joyful and encouraged and loved. Because I, I know he appreciated every one of the relationships and friendships he had with y'all. And I know I will always, he will always have a place in my heart. And um, I'm just really thankful for that. Thank you. want to thank each and every one of you that shared for the really heartfelt sharing uh, on your relationships with Jose. And, you know, we talk about how for him, life is not ended, but changed. But he also lives on in this world, you know, through each of you, through the relationships he had, through, you know, his beautiful family, through his parents, um, through his brother, through the entire family um, and his friendships, business partners. Um, and so I thank you for your sharing today as well. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Jose, and the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day, Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we will have a procession and we'll move out to, to Jose's final resting place.